Hello there, boys and girls, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. No particular theme to today's video, just a couple of games where I'm driving tanks and shooting stuff up. Starting off with uh, this match here. It's uh, the Tiger 2 on Ruinberg. I'm joined by Ike, who is also in his Tiger 2. Quickie Baby in his IS-3. We're top tier. Plenty of opportunity to really mess things up in this battle. Obviously we're platooned up in heavy tanks rather than mediums in this game. And I tend to find that if you're going to platoon up and drive medium tanks, you really should stick together, because a, a well-executed medium tank wolf pack is greater than the sum of its parts. With heavy tanks, however, there is a bit more capacity for independent action. And when you're driving three of your team's top tier heavies on a map like Ruinberg, well, there are plenty of choke points that need heavy tanks on them, so sticking together isn't always the best idea. Not when you're top tier heavies on a map like this. So we are, in fact, going to split up and... Ooh, that was close. Artillery shell very, very narrowly missed my engine deck. That could have caused me all kinds of problems. So, anyway. A little bit of a sideshow there, shooting at uh, some tanks that were spotted in the village over on the far eastern side. And yep, I am taking hits from the rear. And yes, that Carnarvon did have to squeeze his shots past four other tanks, including an AMX 5100 on 500 health in order to put a shot into me. This is the sort of thing you have to put up with when you're driving a tank with the word jingles over the top of it. Unfortunately, I haven't exactly covered myself in glory so far. My first two shots have both hit and bounced. But that one didn't, which is nice. Now, there's an Indian Panzer with me here. And he was a good guy to have around you. Um, he certainly wasn't afraid of going forward, outflanking big heavies and getting stuck in, as you're going to see in a moment. Now, I know there's still a T-34 down there. But I'm a, a little worried about the T-29 that went around behind the church. So I'll quickly check to make sure I'm not getting outflanked. Seems clear. Let's go around and try to deal with this T-34. Now a T-34 from the front hull down, tricky. And there, the commander's hatch, which is not an easy target to hit. Probably the only place you can really penetrate him. And this is when the Indian Panzer makes his move. Now the SU-12244 takes a shot and misses. I put a shot into him, force him to back off. But the Indian Panzer has done a, exactly the right thing. He's gone right around the T-34, out of the line of fire of the SU-122. Unfortunately, my shot bounces. So I close in to help this guy against the T-34. I cannot leave him alone. The guy went out, distracted the big tank. He needs backup and support. Bounce a shot from the SU-122. And then there's a T-29 out there somewhere. I'm keeping an eye open for him. And the Indian Panzer goes in, he takes a hit. And again I bounce. My shooting really, really sucked in this game. Indian Panzer took the hit, on the nose, went around, got behind the tank destroyer, I rammed him, he finished him off. Now, where's that T-29? Ah, there he is. Came around the corner angled, he took my tracks. Now, unfortunately, it spun me facing head on to him. But I managed to fire and re-angle and it's as if, I mean, he must have reloaded by now, unless he's been ammo racked. Or possibly he's just sitting there thinking, shit, <laughs> where do I shoot a Tiger 2? Either way, Indian Panzer doesn't leave me hanging, comes out, backs me up, finishes him off. So, um, I mean, I've done some pretty poor shooting, some shots that really shouldn't have bounced. But, I have done 2,000 damage, and between myself and this Indian Panzer working together, we've accounted for three enemy tanks. But the enemy team didn't make it difficult. I mean, it was two of us against three enemy tanks, but 
every encounter with those enemy tanks was two on one, three times in a row. So the enemy team just didn't work together the way myself and the Indian Panzer did. And while I have done 2,000 damage, I haven't actually gotten any kills myself. Quickie Baby's sitting there on four kills. Ike's managed to get himself killed in all the excitement I missed it. And I have a pretty good idea where the enemy artillery is likely to be. And Quickie Baby seems to be nosing around in the same direction himself. But while I do love me an artillery kill, because they're so rare... Um, first of all, there was a Jagdpanzer IV spotted out in the middle of the field over here. There he is, flat panzer spotted. Seems to be angling for a shot at Quickie Baby. Quickie Baby kill denied and oh there's the army. Come on, G gimme, 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 gimme. Oh so satisfying. <laughs> now while I'd love to also bag the kill on that T-43, I'm never gonna get there in time because aside from me and Quickie Baby, everybody else on the team is parked well and truly in the cap circle and we are about to win by cap so 2400 damage is all i'm going to get still not bad let's get this show on the road jingle Sircon and Foch are in an e25 platoon yay but they're on el haluf no yeah not my favorite map in the game in fact, I think the only map I hate more than this is Kamarin. I think they're both maps that work very, very, very well if you have good teamwork. <laughs> yeah, right. Teamwork in random battles. You must be new here. And I think that's why these maps suck. But, hey, we've got a kill. So, it's not all bad. And, no, I have no idea what a T1 Heavy thought he was going to do down there either. So, Posh has bagged himself his first kill. And any second now, he's going to bag himself. There it is, his second kill. He just killed our own Leopard. And he's not sorry either. The Leopard was trying to push him out from his sniping position in the cover of the rocks up there. So, one less douchebag on the team. Never a bad thing. Of course, now El Haluf settles down into the usual campy campy snipey snipey situation and you've got plenty of ammo in the E25 so I'm taking some pot shots at those likely positions where the enemy team also like the camp and that's when Sircon decides screw this this is boring I'm in a scout E25 cover me I'm going in and I'm always happy to let somebody else take the hits for me so uh, yeah that's exactly what we do. Look at him go, that crazy Dutch bastard. I'll tell you what, it works. Check this out. Cheers, dude. <laughs> go find us some more. Oh, is he going to come out? Is he going to come out? Yes, he's going to come out. Oh, damn it, it bounced. Damn it, it bounced again. That's more like it. Hey. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, Sircon's taking hits. We must do something about this. Sircon, stop taking hits. I need you to flush more targets out for me. God damn it, Fosh has got another one. Fosh has gone from minus one to two kills. <laughs> He's making me look bad. Now, it's at this point where I think Sircon must have really upset the enemy team because they all start driving out of cover into the open to take shots at him. And I thought that, you know, we'd already clearly demonstrated at this point what happens to enemy tanks that drive out of cover into the open. But they don't seem to have learned their lesson. So that's another two dead. But this will never do. I'm not going to let Sircon and Fosh have all the glory. And I figure that we've killed all the idiots and the only ones left alive in the enemy team are the ones who are well in cover. So um, I'm going to have to go forward and flush them out myself. 
and that's one of the many, many good things about the E25. If I'd been in this position, in a T28 or a T28 prototype, for example, the game would have been over before I'd even gotten this far across the middle of the valley. Not so in the E25. This thing is like the Tasmanian Devil. Oh, I found them. Okay, T-43 up high, ARL-44 down low. Fosh is keeping the T-43 pinned down. And I'm attempting to work over this ARL. Now it's a kind of good news, bad news situation with the ARL. I don't have an awful lot to shoot at. But, I'm such a low profile machine that the ARL's having to go through contortions to get his gun pointed at me and eventually he just decides screw it on. I'll shoot at the KV-1 instead. But, hang on a minute. I've still got no kills. Even the fucking KV-1's got two kills. Oh, I'm going to have to do better than this. This is a public service announcement. For all remaining enemy tanks, please report to the E-25 with the Norwegian flag. Thank you. No, I'm not Norwegian. But the E-25 was gifted to me by a Norwegian subscriber. So that's why I have a Norwegian flag on it. Aha! Uh -huh. 3002M. Guns pointing the other way. Yes, I can get a kill. Come on. Come on. Ah, he's missed. Come on. My first kill. God damn you, Artie. That was my kill. Oh, wait. There's an AT-7 over there. And he's got his back to me. Oh, here it comes. Surprise. Oh, shit. He's got a friend. Think quick. Emergency plan. Keep driving. Ah, Artie. Crap. Uh, uh, get around him. Use him as cover. Hey, I got a kill. <laughs> it was artillery. <laughs> oh, totally worth it. Remember, it's not the number of the kills, it's the quality of the kills that counts. And then from out of nowhere, a wild ELC appears. Hey, two kills. <laughs> so... Not actually that bad at all. Confederate, two kills, two and a half thousand damage done, 71,000 credits earned, 65,000 of which was pure profit. Hilariously, while Circumflexes did get 1,600 spotting damage in that game, I basically sat on my ass the first half of the match and still got nearly 1,200 spotting damage of my own. <laughs> and I didn't have to drive all the way across the middle of the field in El Halouf to do it, which just goes to prove no good deed goes unpunished. But hey, Sircon, if you're watching this, don't let me stop you from keeping on doing what you do, you crazy Dutch bastard. Final replay. I'm in the T-54. Quickie Baby is in his T-54E1. And Ike is in his ever-reliable M46 pattern. We're here on Pearl River. And we're occupying three of our team's five Tier 9 slots. And sometimes, you just have to man up and do what a heavy tank's got to do, even if you're driving a medium tank. Now the T-54, along with, along with the Centurion Mark VII, is probably one of the only two medium tanks in which I would feel entirely comfortable coming up here and doing a heavy tank's job on this part of Pearl River. You've got a very, very bouncy turret front. In fact, the whole front of the tank is pretty well armoured. You've also got 320mm of penetration with high explosive anti tank ammo for when you come across those pesky E75s. Unfortunately, I have loaded for bear, and there don't appear to be any bears to shoot at. So, uh, has anybody seen any E75s? Oh, hell, never mind the E-75. Other than the Object 704, has anybody seen any enemy Tier 9s? Now, this isn't entirely good news, because it means that we're going to have to clean up here and then turn around and head back to base, because if the enemy Tier 9s, with the exception of a... Well, I don't envy the position of that Object 704. But if he's the only one here, the base is going to be in trouble. 
very, very soon. Because they're either camping on the other side of that bridge, just waiting for these guys to die, or they're flanking around and they're making a move on our base. So once we've dealt with these guys, back to base is exactly what we're going to do. But we do need to deal with these guys before we can safely turn around and head back. So that's one enemy ISA left on the other side of that bridge. That we know about. But our spider sense is tingling, and we figure we can leave that IS-8 to the rest of the guys who push the valley with us. But the bat signal is going off. And we're not feeling very confident about the safety of our base. So we're going to stick together, and we're going to head back. And I have been a little bit trigger happy with the high explosive anti-tank ammo up to this point. I only carry 10 rounds of it on my T-54. And with that E-75 unlocated, I might just regret the decision to fire off so much of it at T-29s. And oh look, it's almost as if we saw this coming. Suddenly, seven enemy tanks all popped up. More or less exactly where we predicted they were going to be. And while I'd love to sit here and take credit for the decision to fall back to the base, it was actually Quickie Baby's spider sense that was tingling, and not mine. That's why he's a unicum, and I'm not. Coming back was definitely the right thing to do, because everybody else on the team who went the other way is now dead. We're losing 3-8, and we are now the front line of defence. Quickie Baby and Ike have headed north to head off the medium and light tank outflanking manoeuvre. Quickie Baby's in an autoloader tank. He needs Ike to back him up, which moves me down here to hold off the heavy assault. And I'm taking hits from a T-71. And he's hit my ammo rack. And there's a T-54. But I'm angled. And I bounce his shot. And Ike and Quickie Baby kill him. Now, I'm not under immediate pressure from the heavies, but I can Quickie Baby, who is now reloading, are under pressure from that AMX 3090. And this T 54E1, he's trying to get around their flank. So I need to buy them time to reload, and disaster strikes. He sets me on fire. So I put the fire out, and I assists me in killing him. Quickie Baby's still reloading. And this AMX 1390 has now reloaded. An unbelievable bounce. Quickie Baby rams him, pins him in position. Ike gets the kill. And and there's another one coming. SU12244 now. Now, now Quickie Baby has reloaded. Which is going to help take the pressure off me. Shot went slightly to the left, hit his gun mantlet. Got to keep moving, got to keep moving. All he can really shoot at is my turret. There we go, bounced a shot. There we go. And, um, refresh my memory. Were we, were we losing 3-8 a minute ago? I think we were. <laughs> and just like that. All they've got left is that little bastard in the T-71 who took my ammo rack out. And between the three of us, we've accounted for two-thirds of the enemy team. Medium tank platoons. They really are fantastic. Oh, there's the T-71. So, one of our IS-8 gets his base capture points. The other IS-8... He's going to get himself a kill. Everybody's a winner. Remember folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.